Hey everybody, how are you today? This is Jim Prusak, physical therapist and owner of The Pain PT. And we're going to talk today about the brain and pain, the missing link. Now this is what we've been chatting about pretty much the whole time I've been on YouTube. And I want to go over today and review some of the science that really supports this work. So this can drive into your brains the idea that to overcome chronic pain, we really got to change the brain. So let's get started. So we know that chronic pain is massive. The number of sufferers in the United States alone is 100 million Americans. Now that's actually more than diabetes, heart disease, which includes stroke, and cancer combined. So that's crazy, the number of people that are suffering from chronic pain. And we don't have a good handle on understanding chronic pain and that's why a lot of people are still struggling with it. But here we go, so the brain. Now this is the last frontier medicine. This is the last area of our body that we really don't have all the answers to yet. Nobody goes in and gets a brain scan unless they've had a stroke or a brain injury or a concussion. But pretty much I, I can guarantee you down the road we'll be doing brain scans for people with chronic pain. And the reason why is there's a lot of research coming out to show the implication of the brain in chronic pain, central nervous system and the associated peripheral nervous system. So you can see here, there's a couple areas of the brain that are linked with pain. There's a lot of areas of the brain actually, but we're gonna to touch base on a couple of them today and point out um, some of the details. So this is a study, and I've talked about this one before, it came out in 2012, but it's one of my favorite studies. And the title of this was, if your back hurts, it could be in your head, literally. This was done at Northwestern University. And they found that chronic pain in the back, in the lower back, was actually traced to irregularities in brain connections. And what they did was they scanned people's brains at the onset of acute low back pain. Then they waited a whole year and they scanned the brains again. Now, a lot of people recovered in that year time frame from the back pain and a certain number of people did not. And what they showed the people who went on to have chronic pain a year later, they had a different pattern in the brain that handled emotional responses. Now if you guys have been listening to me for a while or follow the work of Dr. Sarno, he talks a lot about emotions and stress and how that creates chronic pain. Now the two parts of the brain that they uh, noticed or saw on the brain MRIs were the insula, which is active when people have emotional responses to events, and the nucleus accumbens. And this nucleus accumbens plays a role in teaching the brain how to respond to changes in your environment. And it's sort of like this interface between your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. And I'm going to show you another study in a minute that kind of talks about this nucleus accumbens as well. But basically what they did was they actually found and they could predict with 85% accuracy looking at the brain scans from the initial brain scan. And then a year later, they could predict 85% accuracy who was going to go on and get chronic pain. And they saw this because of the brain. The brain changes that were there a year later were already pre-existing. Okay, so people were predisposed or had a predisposition towards getting chronic pain, essentially, because of the brain and how their brains worked. Now, we talk a lot about that here, about stress, about suppressing emotions, about personality characteristics, about trauma, all these things that can impact the brain throughout life. So Dr. Apkarian, who is the lead researcher on this study, this is his quote from the study, for the first time we can explain why people who may have the exact same initial pain either go on to recover or develop chronic pain. The injury by itself is not enough to explain the ongoing pain. It has to do with the injury combined with the state of the brain. This finding is the culmination of 10 years of our research. So this was 2012, and since that time, we have even more and more research that's pointing more handily to the impact of the brain and not only creating but also sustaining pain. So here we go, nucleus accumbens again. We talked about that. They've done some studies on this. They found, again, it's 
it's the part of the brain that's sort of an interface works between your cognitions, your emotions, and your actions. So it's an important part of the brain. And they found recently, this was a study, um, April of 2020, that changes in the nucleus accumbens was linked to the onset of chronic back pain. Okay, so they're actually looking and found this link. This is eight years later from the initial study that also showed the nucleus accumbens uh, being changed or modified in chronic back pain. So just more support for this area of the brain. Now there's been a review study done on structural and functional MRI studies on pain catastrophizing. Now we also talk a lot about that here, about your thinking, negative thinking, rumination, what they call catastrophizing, negative beliefs. This actually changes the brain. Okay, there's different parts of your brain that become affected when you're thinking negatively. And it has an impact on pain. There's a study done, it's not, I'm not showing it to you here, but there's a study done and people who got knee replacements. And those who are catastrophizers have a tendency to think negatively. They still had pain even after getting a knee replacement. So it shows you how important our thinking is and these parts of the brain that control our thinking can have an impact on the body. So even somebody who's got their whole knee taken out cannot be structural at all, they're still continuing to have pain. Now this is really interesting. This is, this is the latest uh, that come out this year, May 18th, 2020 out of Duke University. Now the scientists have found, now this was done in rats or mice, but they think it's uh, very well correlated with humans. They found that a brain center, that when they shut down that brain center, it literally shut down the pain, physical pain. Now take a guess where this was, your amygdala. Now your amygdala is one of the biggest centers of emotion in the brain. It works a lot with fear, a lot with worry, anxiety, and also other emotions. This was an unexpected result. They didn't think that they could turn off physical pain by just turning off this brain center, but they did. So this supports all the work from Dr. Sarno it supports all the work around the nervous system, the fight or flight response and autonomic nervous system, anxiety, and negative emotions that can impact pain. So we can get rid of our fear, we can get rid of our worry, get rid of our anxiety around our symptoms, a lot of pain goes away. We can deal with our emotions, we can deal with our feelings, a lot of pain goes away. And this study shows that, really, really powerful. Now. I want to talk a little bit about uh, another thing here in terms of what we can do and how it affects the brain for recovery of chronic pain. This was a study done at Yale University 2020 again, February. Now they taught people mindfulness, right? Which is something I teach a lot of my patients. Now mindfulness, we, we spin it into a, a process called somatic tracking, which I have on my website, sorry, on my YouTube channel that you can go and explore and practice. It's very, very powerful. So they found in this study that they could uh, teach somebody 20 minutes of mindfulness. And within that first 20 minutes, they were able to, these people were able to affect the level of pain they felt when they had a, a hot poker putting high heat on their forearm. So their brains were able to respond as if they were experiencing a normal temperature. So it shows that we can change the brain through somatic tracking and mindfulness the way we, we operate and what we think, what we feel. Okay, so this is an important piece. Another thing that we can do is that people put feelings into words. So either by verbalization, expression, through words, through journaling. And when we do that, uh, it produces a therapeutic effect in the brain. So this was 2007, UCLA. They looked at people who were verbalizing their feelings, sadness, anger, made the pain less intense. Okay, they did a second study that combined this with some, some Buddhist teachings around mindfulness, which we just mentioned, and it also produced a variety of health benefits. So these are all brain effects. These are all changes in the brain. And basically, this is how we can change the pain, is by working through the brain, by impacting the centers of the brain that are overactive, uh, mainly the emotional centers, 
nucleus accumbens, and working to strengthen those areas of the brain that are weak, that aren't working as well. And so that's why we think of this as um, a rehab program for the brain, <clears throat> strengthening and also weakening areas so we can get a balance again. I hope this was helpful to all of you. It really shows the science is caught up and is letting us know that we really need to look at the brain when we're looking at chronic pain. Take care, everybody.